and welcome back to the Hello. wake up call. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's Friday. T it is. <laughs> Where are we, Stuart? I'm doing good. I kind of uh, I was up and down last night. I know we're prepping for this because we're kind of starting a whole new thing on Fridays, yes. which is about Burning Man content. How so, exciting. That's right. And it's, you know, it's such a big thing to talk about and it's endless, all the different things you could talk about. So, you know, we've got a few, you know, this is our first start on this Friday, but we'll be every Friday kind of starting to introduce Skype Burning Man interviews with burners from all over the world and kind of different guests talking about memories, etc., etc. So. That's the most amazing thing about LoadedTV.com and Burning Man here at the Morris mm -hmm. Burner Hotel. Uh, it's all around the world. No matter where you are, you can tune in and watch us no matter what time right. it is. It's five o'clock somewhere? Indeed. Yes. <laughs> so uh, anywhere you are in the world, yep. you just tune in and watch it. You can. And you can the live chat cool with thing us. Is that's exactly what I was going to say. You read my mind. There's a chat screen there at the bottom of your screen. You just make up a little name and you chat right. and you ask us anything you want to ask us. You say anything you and we will reply to you. And if you've never been to Burning Man, for example, you can ask us a question about it and we'll try and answer it. I'm only into my second year of Burning Man. Brandy's obviously way harder core than I am. Yeah, I took his so. for me, not last year, but the year before. <laughs> it was amazing. We have so many pictures of that that we're going to show you a little bit later. That's right. But first off, obviously, you know, my, wasn't last year, this, this previous summer, but the summer before was my first time out there. You took me out. And obviously we were just wandering around. And for me, you know, working in the media industry, I was so kind of focused on kind of like, I just need to be behind a camera. And I kind of felt lost without having but a camera. But I, I had you relaxed. I'm like, Sue you Stewart, Woosa, <laughs> take it in, enjoy, let's meet so many new friends, let's go experience all the artwork, let's go in this random building, let's go yeah. talk to these random people. And that's what it's so, all about. That's what I meant. You know, so yeah, being out there, you know, obviously we collected up a few interviews, you know, that you did with people's kind of personal experiences of like Burning Man. So uh, we've actually got the first one, which is actually. Are uh, we going to jump into that? We are going to jump into one that was with uh, Animal. I think his name was Animal Dancer, and it was really funny. So I wore my pants today for. Uh, Specifically. For Animal Dancer, for Animal Dancer. and. <laughs> Jungle gym. In jungle gym. I That's right. Uh, all right, so what else is on the agenda before we get to um, the videos? Well, things that we want to talk about is people's obviously personal experiences. So we've got, you know, a couple of interviews with people uh, that obviously you talk to out at Burning Man. We've got like a montage of photos that we'll talk through a bit later yeah, on. Fun, yeah. um, obviously, uh, we'll have Jungle Jim coming in to talk about why he loves Burning Man. And uh, he's obviously the owner of the Morris Burner Hotel. And uh, later on after that, we're going to be talking about art cars and what people kind of obviously put into kind of building an art car and Mutant kind of all vehicles. the different kind of like themes, exactly, because there's thousands. So Everybody has their own personality. It's, oh, it's incredible. Well, that's one thing I love. And like Brandy was just saying about obviously wearing these leggings is the fact that you can wear anything and anything out at Burning Man. And I got you to. You huh? did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of like one of those things where you kind of just... Finally, after a while, you start letting go. You come out of your shell. Like, here in, um, they call it the normal, there's different words for it, but when you're there, you just get to be yourself. Freedom well, of expression in so many ways. Yeah, especially after this year going out, because this was the first, the first time I went out. I came out, met you there, but I was only there for the Friday, Saturday, and then left on the Sunday. So you got a little taste of it. This past summer, I went... The whole week! The whole week, from the Monday to the Monday. And I came back and I really understood what you had been telling me about for the last two years. It's hard to understand, like people will tell you and show you videos, but mm -hmm. you really do not get the you whole don't. entire concept you, until you actually go and experience it You come it back yourself. with this amazing feeling inside you, you of really like know. release and kind of, um, you've met new friends that you keep in contact with. The most with. amazing people you'll ever you meet. You do, exactly. And the people That's like true. I camped with this year at Salon 7, woo! <laughs> was um, they were from Hong Kong, Canada. They were a whole mix of like yoga instructors. And it was just incredible. We've kept in contact through the year and I actually was just talking to Creel, um, who's in charge of Salon 7. And uh, he's based up in Vancouver. 
and we were just talking the other day on Facebook and talking about this year and what kind of things need to be kind of sorted for the camp and them coming into town early so we can organize bicycles for people in the camp that have never been so that it's kind of more relaxed for people that have never experienced it before. So it's kind of, it's really cool that you just build these relationships with people. And the other big thing for me was being kind of obviously working with like live streaming and internet was the fact of getting out there and leaving your cell phone, leaving your laptop. And you're just, disconnected you're from the outside world totally and you're in disconnected. your own little city. Yeah, exactly. City. And kind of letting Black go because when you turn up, that feeling of kind of like, I'm nervous. I was really you nervous. Were, he was so nervous. I'm not even going to... I was petrified. Stop. The actual but day... now you're... In, you're I ecstatic. want to go back. Yes, I you're want to go back. And I think I'll have that. I remember you telling me once that even so, every year, you still get nervous about going out there. But once you're there, you're home. Just different kind of butterflies, excitement, yeah. etc. cetera. I, I, and I can totally see that because I'm excited to go back, but I still would be nervous. But like this year, I remember packing up the Jeep and still that day just going, do I want to go? And we're like an hour away from leaving. And I was like, I'm and really nervous. And then at the end, do I want to leave? <laughs> no. no. I, didn't, I didn't want it to be over. Of and I was not. like, I didn't want to be leaving. And, you know, unfortunately, like um, my friend Kai, who came with me, he had to take my Jeep back into town um, because one of the girls that we were with had obviously broken her leg. And yes. kind of like, so we had to kind of, uh, I had to hitch a ride, but so many people were like, oh yeah, we'll give you a ride back. Of and, course. You know. And I threw in a picture of Kai there at Burning Man for the first time. Yeah. So we had some chatters. My grandpa, hello, Papa Ten, good morning. Um, everybody, feel free to chat in. There's a chat box at the bottom of your screen, but we should move on to yeah, the next Yeah, so time. first uh, interview, this was from two years ago, but like I said, I was out there, it was my time to kind of like go out there and kind of for those couple of days kind of explore and really kind of document things that people's feelings at Burning Man. So uh, the first obviously interview that we did out there uh, was with Oh my Animal gosh, Dancer. we're going into the interviews first and not the photo montage? Nope, we're going to oh show boy. Animal Dancer first. So uh, this I'm is the first interview we did, so let's take a look. Oh boy, <laughs> enjoy. Hey, guess where I am? It's Brandy and I'm at Burning Man! That's right, who am I here with? This Animal is, Dancer! Animal Dancer! Where are you from? Portland, Oregon! Portland! Did you drive here? Oh yeah, baby! How long was that drive? That was 12 long hours in my hot RV! Wow, wow, wow! How many years have you been here? This is my fourth burn. What made you come here? Fucking awesome! Isn't it? What made you come here in the first place? Um. That crazy fucker over there behind the bar, and my wife told me that we need to go to Burning Man. And you're coming in all the time, right? I come as often as I can. Tell us about your bar here. This is the Green Hour, and we serve root beer during and the day and absinthe at the Green Hour. Is, when's the Green Hour? The Green Hour is at sunset, baby. Well, hour be before sunset. Well, guess what? We already got our absinthe. <laughs> yeah, you know what? But if you're cool enough, we just give it to you anyway. So cool. Oh my Woo! god! Thank you so much. We're gonna go see what Kai's up to. Wasn't that fun? So that's just literally we're just walking around. I just around. saw the dancing he was doing <laughs> in that. <laughs> well, I wore the pants for him in Jungle Gym. All right, so check this out. So we're just wandering around. Yeah. And we just run into him, and he's like. Hey, what's up? Come into my party. And I still have his shot glasses. I was going to say, that was, I still have them. I think it was called the Green Hour. And uh -huh. like, that was my first alcoholic shot out there. And I was, again, really nervous. Was it? It was, because I was so nervous having like all my equipment there and kind of like, where am I? What's going on? Well, it was your first time. And, and then you loosened up and now you're like, I did. Ah! Yeah. But like I said, it's kind of that personal thing of just slowly letting go and mm -hmm. for me I was such a square box I only knew Burning you Man. were when I first met you were the squarest box in the whole entire world I was and now you're a circle <laughs> thanks or an yeah. oval or a <laughs> zigzag but, it, but it's incredible how you kind of like I think because I've met so many people who are like I've never been to Burning Man and I don't think it's me and that's how I was I used to say there is no way I want to go out there it's not my cup of tea and I was totally just like that. I had a media perception of what Burning Man was. There is so many videos I've seen on YouTube, etc., and blogs that I've read 
um, and they talk about how negative they were about it mm -hmm. until they finally went out there and then called them their self stupid and said, right. wow, how dare me judge this place without going. That's pretty good. Awesome. Because so we have another interview, right? Don't we, we do. And now this is um, obviously an interview with your friend Tom, who you've been a lifelong, well, kind of okay, a lifelong so burner with. Tom, myself, and Jungle Jim, all, all our first years was 2008, correct? So 2008. Uh, okay. Tom is older than both my parents, and I consider him my best friend. Uh, you meet your best friends uh -huh. out there. We get along a Extremely amazing. We must have been married brother and sister or twins or something in a past life. I don't know what it is, but this is an interview with uh, my best friend Tom and During the interview a random of course because everything is so random out there. It just, just walks up and the interview gifts, has, you. gifts us and just hangs out and then I'm like hey I interviewed her and him and it was just so much fun well, So you right. get to meet my best friend Tom and Tom is just such a caring giving guy he is He's the like, most amazing, genuine, kind-hearted uh -huh. man. No, really lovely. So let's take a uh, look and obviously see the interview that Brandy did with Tom. I'm kind of embarrassed. It's an old man. Hey, guess who it is? Brandy here, and I am back with Tom. You know why? Because Tom's my friend. And Tom, how many years have you been here at Burning Man? Five years. And I've been here five years as well. Um, so what brought you back and continues to bring you back? I'll always come back. Love the place. What do you love the most about it? The party, of course. <laughs> what about the people? People are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so out of every year, considering this is both of our fifths, what's your favorite best memory ever? The best memory was when I met you and uh, we did the little, we ditched our crowd. Well, thank you. See how nice people are here. They just walk up and say, have a drink, and we say thank you, and excuse me. No, I'm being offered a bracelet. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. It's a mustache bracelet. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm Rachel. I'm from Reno. Oh, I'm from Reno. Is it? How many years have you been out here? This is my fourth year. What keeps you coming back? You know, it's just a place where you can either be in the madness or be completely separate from everybody, and it takes a couple minutes only to do that, and that's why I love it. You can just do whatever you love. It is what you make it. It's what you make it, and you can't explain it to anybody. It's, um, you have to come out to experience it, and that's what it's about. So, definitely. Thank you so much for the mass inspiration, Blair Brad and the Sangria, and oh my goodness, Tom, hi, back to you. Back Aren't to people me. awesome? They are. I love the people. Right. And it really is what you make it. People say this and this and this, but... Make it stay in your camp and sleep and cuddle. Who cares, right? Well, so, you you like to sleep all the time. I do. I, I don't go out like this guy. I don't know no. how he does it. Four days straight, he's awake. I'm sleeping all the time on huh, Tom. Nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I still love it. Okay, your best memory experience ever, you said meeting our, me. Meeting you, and then our funnest time was uh, we were with a big crowd, and we just were sick of the crowd. So we had to ditch our crowd, so we were on, in our car. So we jumped off the art car, followed our art car, saw another art car, ran behind it so no, no, nobody would see us. Then we had the best time. We went roller skating. I uh, met a really cool girl. She met a girl for me. For, not for me. But for me. <laughs> not like that, <laughs> just friend. Anyway, so don't go out. My advice to you guys out there, don't go out with 10, 15 people that all want to do something separate and take pictures, right? Right. Because me and Tom said... Let's go on an, our own adventure. We jumped off in our car as it was moving, of which course. might not be the smartest idea, but it was fun. And we ran behind that one until another one came and ran around and just followed it. And it was, we it had was the greatest time ever. The best time. And we will again next year? Uh huh, of course. Oh, you're so great, Tom. Oh. Obviously, being camped at uh, Salon 7 um, this year. Yeah. And I was working on the bar a good couple of nights, and just the amount of different people. They came up to the bar and, you know, obviously gave them a drink and then we just got into long conversations, you know. And uh, one of the best stories I heard was, uh, it was an English guy and he was probably in his 70s and uh, he was there with his wife and he explained to me he and his wife had wanted to go to Burning Man for years and years but never, you know, done it. And uh, his mother had just passed away and they'd flown back to England uh, for the funeral and uh, she'd obviously left a bit of money, um, you know, after passing away for him. 
and uh, he and his wife were like, um, they put themselves on that list where you might get a ticket. Uh -huh. And um, and literally the day after the funeral, he got an email saying, <gasps> you can get tickets if you still want them. So he was like, this must they be- They gave me chills, I get chills so easily. <laughs> and that is it was so beautiful. awesome. And he was just like, it must have been my mum saying, it go. It was, that's why go, it gave me the chills. That go was, and celebrate, inside. you know, kind of. And so he was like, wow, my mum's left me some money. I just got this email, it's a sign. And so yes. he and his wife, and they just went. And I had like, I was there for about two hours just talking away to them. And Isn't that I was amazing really the people that you meet and how yeah. they all change your life in one way or another. And, and the weirdest one for me was um, this girl, uh, another girl and her husband, they were about the same age as me, came up and um, and we got talking and she said, oh, you're from England? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, whereabouts? And and uh, I obviously told them the village, yeah, where my parents live. And she was like, I don't believe it. I used to live in the village just up from where your parents live. And we started listing off names. And she was like, yeah, I know Graham Hogg. I know Ben wow. Roos. All what these guys that I used to hang out with when I was like 14, 15. So it's, yeah, just, it's incredible. That's awesome. So what we're going to do is take a quick break, and um, and then after that we've got a really, really, really great guest coming up, who both of us obviously love and adore, Jungle Jim Gibson, Yay! will be here to talk about his personal experiences and feelings, and the kind of the passion and why he loves you know Burning Man. So we've got a little photo montage that you and Jim can obviously talk about as well. So so are we going to do the? Jim's interview first, mm -hmm. and then do the photo montage Correct. after the interview yep. all together. So we're going to have Jim on here as well, and we can That'll talk through fun. the photos. We'll be able to yeah. see the photos right here. So anyway, let's take a quick break, and we'll have Jungle Jim right on after the break. See you then. And welcome back to the Wake Up Call here live at Studio M in the Morris Burner Hotel. And for anyone that hasn't tuned in before um, and doesn't have an idea what the Morris uh, Burner Hotel is here in Reno, Nevada, this is the man behind the whole idea, Jungle Jim Gibson. Give it up yes! for the man. I would love to hear the story behind the How whole this hotel. Happened? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's such a crazy trip. You know, it started at Burning Man. You know, I, I uh, you talk about stories. Uh -huh. Wonderful, wonderful stories. The one that made this thing happen was uh, 2011, getting involved in building the temple. And, uh, you know, seeing what this community can do, seeing the, you know, hundreds of people putting in hundreds and thousands of hours building this project and, and then going out on the playa with these people. And I think there was about 180 of us that put this building up and it was, uh, it went into Ripley's as the highest snow foundation building in history. <gasps> it's no, the, I think I like the sixth or seventh highest wooden building in, in history. Um, it was, uh, it was just a magnificent structure. We wow. spent uh, be uh, seven months in Reno building all these panels, took them out there and assembled them. And this crew, I mean, it was just, it brought tears to my eyes. I was a fluffer. I drove around in my little buggy and, uh, oh, look at that. Drove around in my little buggy and, and uh, you know, fed ice and frozen foods and, and kept the, the crew uh, hydrated. And, and right. uh, But they were working 18, 20 20 hour days every single day for two weeks. Wow. And, and the, the heart and soul, I, you know, I, I kept thinking to myself, I've run companies, I've been involved, and I kept thinking to myself, there is no way in the world that you could ever find a paid crew with this much heart and this much soul to do what they did. That's it was, it, the, the, they overcame such odds, almost brings tears to my eyes. Anyway, I, I fell in love with the Burner community and uh, changed my life. Burning Man did, Burning Man, my first Burning Man was three years before that, okay. and I, I fell in love with the community. No, but this changed it. And and this piece of property surfaced. It was an ugly old dirty hotel next door to the homeless shelters in downtown Reno. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we were looking for some investment and saw this thing and I thought time and time again, you know what, we can do this, we can do this. We never thought of this down here. <laughs> but uh, you know, turning it into a, a permanent communal space, community, not communal, uh, for, for the Burning Man community. And um, the people have been just amazing. This place is looking spectacular. It just, it's, it's turning into such a beautiful place. You it know, really it, is. It, it really is. You know, I'm so proud to be a part of it. And kind of like, um, like I was saying, going out to Burning Man for my first time, you know, and just seeing how things evolve. Every day, you can, you can never make a plan. 
<laughs> you, you just roll with it, you know. You, 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 can't, you, walk, morning you, you go, can't walk from no. here to 200 feet away. Do you know how many stick. people, um, speaking of Tom, his girlfriend went out last year and she made a schedule. She went here at this time, and here at this time, and here at this time. And I always want, I mean, I want to check out so many oh. things. And after Birdie Man's over, I look at the book. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh I should have gone and seen I that. Wanted this and I wanted but, this. I know. but this is what I was thinking about. <laughs> we'll try that. Yeah. It never the, works. With the hotel itself, everything here, oh. even just in the short time I've been here, yeah. it just keeps evolving. Every day, every a new day. idea yes. comes up. I was gone for three days, and I come back, and you guys have cleaned this whole thing out, painted <laughs> stripes for, for safety exits down the hallways, and I go, whoa. How amazing is <laughs> that? It, it's, it's changed my, my life in so many ways. That is so now, nice to know. Now let's oh, go my. right back to the beginning. So before Burning Man, obviously, you were just very focused on business. I was, a, I was the president, CEO of a microchip company. Okay. And I had retired, and my brother had gone a year before. And on his way off the fly, as soon as the sale came on, he goes, James, you're going to Burning Man next year. And I said, okay. I had not gone because... You know, we build, uh, the, the, the product went to military, aerospace, very high tech. And, and having the president go to Burning Man, this is eight years ago, you know, it, it might have rubbed some people the wrong way. So I, I didn't go. And then, uh, so I retired and I went that same year and unbelievable. Really? You know, I, I, <laughs> I did so many stories. It's that so first night, we got in there and, and uh, you know, my brother was, this was his second year. So okay. he, he wasn't totally in tune with the whole thing either. And uh, we, we parked in the parking lot on, you know, Sunday night. We thought, I wonder if there's any parking. We get in there and there's like, you know, four or 5,000 cars sitting row after row, you know, 50 cars long. And I think one of my favorite stories in there is there's a, a Japanese husband, wife, two, you know, crazy Japanese teenage kids. And the, the kids, I mean, we're all parked there for, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hours partying in the parking lot. That's the and best part. Like, I know. Yes, it's the longest know. line ever, yes. But you meet so many friends oh, who jumps out of their cars but, and hangs out. These, and uh, meets, these, uh, the kids are out bopping around and, you know, the, you know, cute, cute. And, and the parents, I swear to God, they're sitting inside their car with a paper towels and Windex dusting the bathroom <laughs> in, in the windshield. Oh, my God. And I'm thinking about, this is, they haven't even gone on a fly yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was, that, that was priceless. When and I brought four virgins my first time, mm -hmm. before they went out, they all showered and, and cleaned their shoes. Another good story. <laughs> and we, I'm laughing my butt off. Like, had, oh, my God. We had this group that was, uh, they pulled in as neighbors. And it was uh, six guys, and I say they're from New York because of their accents. They rented this million-dollar motorhome. Beautiful wow. thing. And they get out, and they're this first day, their first day, they jump out, and they're just filled with energy and fun. And, and, and I didn't see them. And next morning, I see them. Guy comes, he opens the door, and he comes staggering out. And he says, can someone, can someone help us with our water? We can't get it on. All, all six of them took, you know, 30-minute showers. Oh, and my the water goodness. Tank they were empty. screwed all no, week no. long. <laughs> I mean, you know, the stories are so, so, so wonderful. So many. So what do you have to tell? I mean, we had a chat in that says, I'm uh, mm -hmm. not oh. so sure about Burning Man. So, you know, uh, Stuart and, and myself, and I don't think we all were at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, say that again? So, not, not everybody's so sure about Burning Man at No, yes. you know what, I, I, I always, I was a hippie as a kid, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and got into business in my early 20s, and it, it kind of led my life. I always enjoyed it. I always had that, that, I treat people well. I always have. All my businesses, everything I've done. And, uh, but I, it, it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know, you see all these videos, you see all these, yeah. you hear all these things, and, and they all look like fun, but, you know, you, you wonder, am I going to be accepted? What? Will I fit in? And that is exactly how I felt. The, yeah. And I, and like I said, I'd heard from Brandy, you know, over and over and over, wow, this festival's incredible. Wow, you know, you're going to love it. And to me, looking at videos she showed me, yeah. and just seeing kind of huge party <laughs> scene, and kind of like lights, and kind of the, hearing the music, and I was just like, this is overwhelming. I it don't is what think you I make can it. handle this. It is what I tell everybody. That's, it is what you make it. And that's how Absolutely. I feel now. It changed me. I came back, and especially after standing out there this year and seeing the temple burn, uh, you know, after the, the night of the so man. And yes. it was, it really Spiritual. touched me. And yeah. And I just felt absolutely at peace. It, it, it's the most inviting group of people mm -hmm. I've ever met in my life. Exactly. You know, you, I, I've met so many hundreds of people, uh, young girls, 
you know, uh, guys, virgins, that they, they pack their little tiny car up, they drive in, they open the door, and they look around, and, you know, within 30 seconds, there's people there helping them. Mm -hmm. You know, Best it's friends. the most amazing community, which is why I did this. You know, I, I fell in love with the community, and I thought, you know what? I, I was nervous. I mean, it's a leap of faith. You know, mm -hmm. this is not a, a you know, it's Definitely. not a cheap thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty, it's a leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, to have this community come together and to, to create this space, and, and now we're going to have this space, the space, the indoors, the outdoors, That's the right. arts, the crafts, the all the things, the... It's just such an amazing spot. We're a five-minute walk from downtown. Yeah. We this was a, a diamond in the rough. That's an understatement. Because because I love it actually. When you had, for example, Crimson Rose here uh -huh. uh, last week, one of one of the founders one of, of founders. obviously Burning Man, yeah. and how she said, you know, she can't wait for you to have this backyard completely done because a little piece of the plier it's going to be a little piece right of plier here for in the all city. year. I am yeah. so excited. Yeah. I, I can't wait. Well, the thing that that so many people misunderstand about Burning Man is they think it's a big party in the desert. Yes. And it is. It's a hell of a party. <laughs> but it's so but, much But more it's than all that. year long. You know, yeah. our community does stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look at our calendar now and even this time of year, I mean, we're in February, there are two or three burner events going on damn near every day. It's so hard. There's so much activity in What's, this community. And this is, you know, for me coming from London, you know, kind of seeing how for the different uh, different areas of London and how certain areas were all business or whatever, but then art communities. And what you're doing with the Morris Banner Hotel, Jim, is you are bringing to an area an artist community mm -hmm. as well. And you're helping these kind of artists that haven't had spaces yeah. or whatever to be able to have a community where they can come, talk, have meetings, yeah. do art, you know, and it's, and it's really kind of gets that creative yeah. mind going. It, it, you, and, and we're not alone, you know, across the street is, uh, is Valley Arts Center, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. They've got, you know, eight or ten or twelve artists that work in there. Um, the Generator, spectacular yes. project. These are, you know, Reno is, you know, they, 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 they started uh, Reno as Art Town, you know, ten, twelve years ago. And uh, we, we went to the museum last night, our, our, our wonderful, mm -hmm. amazing museum, and watched, yep. uh, saw some incredible art, and went next door to Liberty Arts uh, Gallery. And I mean, the there's a, an art walk. There was seven art galleries right downtown on this art walk. It's amazing wow. how much art. And uh, you know, Crimson when she was here with with Maria Partridge, she was looking at uh, one of the things that we, as Reno, as Burning Man, are trying to take uh, out on Burning Man. We build some of the biggest art in the world. It's magnificent. Yes. And then burn said, it all down. Most well, of, well, it. Some of it. Some of it. A, a lot of it is permanent. And. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finding places in the community to place these big art well, projects. This is That's exactly what I was what talking Brandon's about. Talking I have a friend, time. Rob. He builds them all. I mean, to cherish and wish. Mm -hmm. And he transplants them in Beijing or New York oh, yeah. or L.A. And they live forever. Well, we have uh, Jeff Schomburg is one of mm -hmm. our close friends. And we have M from Mom. If you guys remember Mom on yes, the fly. Yes, do. M's out in our backyard. <gasps> M is going to be put up on pedestals, you know, 20 feet in the air. Underneath our gate, so you drive under M. I so cannot wait. Oh, I know. But he does believe. Thing. He's done love. He's done all his projects. Ooh, and I said, my dear, if you're going to do that on the gates, Jim, you should then have some little flames on the oh, other yeah. side of it. It's like, yeah. Oh, this is going to be <laughs> but flaming. It's, I mean, that's you know, there's so many places around this this facility. I mean, it's a half acre. That's right. Downtown and, and this is the thing: is like when Jim says it's you know a very giving community. You know, not only like um, are you obviously helping artists, but for example, yes, we're right next door to one of the biggest homeless centers here in Reno. And every Sunday, Jim is out there with his team and doing coat drives, mm -hmm. supplying food. And luckily, we've had like Jazz Louisiana Kitchens, yeah. who've obviously like provided coffee and donuts. And it's it's making yeah. businesses and people aware so that's of the giving. So that's nature. a good thing to talk about. If somebody is here local in Reno or coming by, they yeah. can stop by the Morris oh. Burner Hotel and drop off jackets, All the clothes, time. We, blankets, We go through clothes, probably a hundred coats a week, and this has been seven, seven or eight weeks in a row. Um, you know, the other thing that's uh, such a positive impact, the city is working so hard to help us do whatever, because we don't fit the mold. We're not really a hotel. I mean, a hotel is such a small piece of what we're doing here. We're, we're a community center. We, all these things that we're doing, and the, uh, the, the thing that's so interesting is we've been here six months. When we moved in here six months ago, the, the police were out here in this area by the homeless shelter five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. It was continuous. It was almost always a car out there making arrests or dealing with drugs. And 
and uh, the ambulances were in there two or three times a day, every single day. And now we see the police over here maybe two or three times a week. Wow. It's, it's remarkable. Wow. Um, uh, we're just talking to Ken Bell, who's a very good friend. He does security. He's going to help us with security. But uh, he, w he made a comment, without me making a comment first, that the change in 4th Street down here in the last six months is dramatic. That's amazing. They, he, yes. he's, he's a bouncer for one of the, wow. the clubs and does yeah. security. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, we want to, we're working very hard in trying to get done what we have to do here and, and get the building done. And once we're, as we go along, we'll get more involved in the shelters. We want to put in a community garden where, yes. where they can come and have a plot of land and grow the food. Yes. You know, the women and that's children. So awesome. We're going to put a, a greenhouse along the back that's aquaponic to Aww. grow food, to bring in and, and, and do food inside of a, of a small little restaurant. I cannot wait for all of this. I know. This. We want to put a, a, a bandstand out in the back so we can have oh great my. music and, and have great. it be just a permanent piece of playa out here. Uh -huh. It literally will be a piece of playa. We even have the dirt on the ground. <laughs> and here I was thinking about moving. What am oh, I doing? No, I want to stay here, here with you here. and help out this whole amazing project. What was I thinking? Where you are an you amazing go? man. Thank you so much for everything that you're oh, doing. Oh, my God. It's my pleasure. You guys come down and donate to the co-drive. Every Sunday, you guys go yeah. down and just yeah. give anything you guys can. Yeah. Come down. You guys, they can volunteer for anything down oh, here. Oh, absolutely. Right? We're always looking for people. You know, it's a... It's a very much a community project. If anybody wants to come down and walk in the front door and say hello and either come and hang out, and, which is great, uh, even better, come on down and, and uh, you know, grab a paintbrush. We're, we're getting very close to being finished with the building, but, uh, you know, at that point we get more into doing events down here and uh, we great. have uh, meetings of so many of our Reno Corps and, and other uh, generator. Uh, people come down here and have meetings. You know, we can host, you know, 15, 20, 25 people. We just set up a killer good audio system, yes. and uh, we've got 3D TV, and we've got an eight-foot projector up there. We're, we're, we're just, we're making it a fun place. It is. It's just going to be fun. Yeah. It's so welcoming. And just after the show yesterday, everybody's making us breakfast. Yeah. It's this whole community <laughs> in the kitchen. I'm done with this show, and I was like, want some bacon? You want some eggs? You want some pancakes? I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. I love it. And that's, so awesome. and Thank that's you what so you're much. doing. Oh my God. You, you are already making it happen. It's already alive. And it's it's alive. such a team effort. It's yeah. not, you know, I'm, I'm certainly a piece of it. Yeah. You know, Vision, you guys, you know Vision, he's the hotel manager, and he's, yeah, he's, he's one of the well, most yeah. uh, uh, interesting, active, proactive, artsy guys I've ever met in my life. And, and yes. how he's, you know, the, the teams of people that, that are getting put together here, like the media team, you guys, and, mm -hmm. and, and the rest of the people that are going to take and, and help d do this, do. Uh, the media and, you know, papers and, and, uh, and newsletters and, and television and all the other pieces of it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a group. There's probably six, eight, ten, twelve people that show up and, and put this thing together so it's incredibly professional. And the D DEA, Department of Extracurricular <laughs> Activities, which, uh, you know, help plan the events around here. There's yes. probably, you know, a dozen or more people that, you know, they work for a living, they're here, they're all, all walks of life that come together on a regular basis to help plan these events. That's and uh, it's such a team effort. Oh, we have a chat coming in. Oh. Ask about donating clothes. Um, it says, am I able to drop off a bunch of jackets and clothes any other day besides Sunday? Oh, absolutely. Sunday is when we go out. Uh, we usually go out about 1 o'clock right on the side street out here and set up a table, a couple of tables, and hang clothes out. And, uh, and, and drop them off anytime. Come by anytime, please. Just knock on the door. It's all and welcome. We're yeah. at 400 East 4th Street, and um, and literally, it's just, you'll see the Morris sign outside. Just come knock on the front door, and you'll probably see Vision, because he's right there mm -hmm. most of the time, literally 24-7. <laughs> um, so just knock, and yeah, anything you'd like to donate. Sure. You know, we, uh, warm socks are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Fresh socks. You know, people, uh, yeah. Gloves. Gloves. Socks. You know, this, uh, we've, we've closed so many people. We don't have anywhere near as many people coming. And if people come in, they take the coat they got last week. Pick a new one, <laughs> but it's uh, you know it's an ongoing thing, and uh, it's so much fun. I mean, if you want to come down and join the drive, it's fun to sit out there, and you know people are so friendly. Yeah, you know they it's really so are. nice. Mm -hmm. It really is a it's an enjoyable. Uh, and they're so grateful once they get oh, something yeah. new and warm for them. They're and they so look at and they go, grateful. "You're giving this away." Uh -huh. well, absolutely. And in a sense, that is the Burning Man spirit because a Burning is. Man, gifting, what? gifting, exactly. So, such a, 
Leave yeah. no trace, gifting. I mean, these, you know, the 10 principles, we should, you know, talk about those someday. You know, Indeed. decommodification. Um, you know, it's, it's just, there, there's such a, uh, you know, every one of these are things that many people practice in their, their normal lives, I hope. And, and you take them all, all 10 of these, these values that we've, we've come up to, to, to recognize. And, and when you go through them all, and people who, who actually understand them and, and, and practice these principles are damn good people. Yeah. They're so involved in the community, they're involved in, in this project, other projects. Uh, it's just such a delight. And that's where if you meet someone like Vision, yeah. he is a prime example of the Burning Man 10 principles. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I tell one of my favorite stories is I tell people when I retired from uh, as the president of my company, and I I, I love my company. I, I worked hard. I love my people. I could count on one hand the number of close friends that I had. Yeah. You know, it's not that I I didn't. Uh, I, I just this community. I mean, I can. There's, I I know so many people. But now, now it's more than your fingers and toes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, okay. thank you for joining us, Jim, today, oh, and uh, God, thank we'd you. Love, love to have you back. And obviously, as you know, we're making Fridays a dedicated mm -hmm. Burning Man Day. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing, obviously, the morning show mm -hmm. about Burning Man content. We'll have the Burning Man Network show on fr uh, Friday evenings mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock with Kai Plascon. And uh, we'll be adding more and more That's Burning Man content. That's going to be a great one. So, you know, interviewing people from around the, the world. That's right. Yeah. Indeed. So again, if you'd like to come down and join in at the Morris Burner Hotel, or if you've never even checked it out, come down here, 400 East 4th Street, and uh, come and take a tour, and uh, see some of the artist rooms, see the space, and see what's going on, and even pick up a pen branch. And Ooh, meet some yeah. new best friends. <laughs> we'll see you right after the break. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my <laughs> Yeah. I'm up for it. He's up for it. We could just leave Jim sitting here on camera. Yeah. And I'll stay here with you. I'm totally I'll sit here and people just come in and all talk right. to me all day. That's right. Like so we brother. always go over time, but you know what? You're watching, you're enjoying it. it. So. And this is obviously <laughs> the start of our whole Burning Man Fridays. Yes. So um, what we've actually put together is Brandy and I compiled some of the photos both of us have taken over the, well, my experiences and from so, your first yeah, time. So what he said was, Brandy, let's um, put together some photos of your past and my past experiences yeah. at Burning Man. So I go through my album, and I find a lot of me and my friends, and I can't find very many of him. And I'm searching his Facebook and mine, and there's not very many. I'm always behind the camera. So there's <laughs> that. So before, we'll close the show, and then we'll, um, with them, um, you know, wake up call and the hotel and stuff, and our schedule. And then okay. we'll end you with talking through our photo montage. That's right. So let's take a look at the, you want to go into the photo montage? Yeah, well, okay, okay. so, um, yeah, let's do whatever the heck you want. Let's have a look, see. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, that's me in a dust storm, or their orbs. <laughs> I think that was my first year, actually. My sh my hat says John. <laughs> that is awesome. We're dancing, and those are my legs up in the air. <laughs> and that is me by a temple oh, up Tom. in the air again. No, that's, that's right, Jeff I and my friend from Kansas. This is one of the groups I went with in 2008 or nine. This is my core group of buddies I go with all the time. And there's just look at one. that. Mel Isn't that Miller. stunning? This is just off my Facebook. That's me hey. and Stuart there. <laughs> His first time. That was awesome. So much fun. It's my friend look at Adam. That. We're just sitting That's in line. I took that picture. That is an awesome picture, by the way. You always forget your address, and sometimes, I don't know, you just. There you are again. Well, let's say I ran into Jabelle Wilt, who's actually one of the There's main Kai. skateboarders uh, yeah. in the U.S., and that was really cool to run that into him. That is amazing. And Kai Uh There we are at the temple. How fun That was beautiful. That? Now, actually, Caleb, uh, who works here, that was one of his builds. Uh, this is another one of my bras, Jared. That's the belief sign we were just uh -huh. talking about. Uh, here's the temple. Uh, my best friends, that's Tom, Adam, and Nicole, and myself. Tom, Adam, Nicole, and myself again. This is our core group that we always go with. Uh, that's me and you at the burn the other that year. That was. Uh, yeah. That was really That was my first fun. ever burn. This ball oh, pit this it. last year was amazing. I took this Stuart picture. Stuart took this picture. And that's Adam and his girlfriend, <laughs> Anya. This is our art car called the Paddy Wagon, lit up at night, and there's a day photo. That was fun. I spent an entire day with you a lot. I know. On Tuesday, the day <laughs> I had to leave, um, and there's our buddies, Anna. It's such an amazing group. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, so next time we'll do it, we'll talk about the art. Car. So there's my virgin buddy again. I had to put his address on his back. It says, if found, please return to 915 and H. 
There you go. Because you never, you know, you get so lost out there. That's a random art car. Um, that's another fun experience I'd love to talk about with Tom, my best friend there, um, on that art car. Signposts and toilets. <laughs> uh, this is here at Decom this is decompression here in Reno, actually, that one. I thought that was a fun one to put up. Um, this was like a hip hop dance yoga class I randomly walked into. It's all random. Yeah, this guy here in the pink sleeve brought him from Kansas to go to Burning Man. And he'd never been. Never I mean, been. No. Totally out of his element. Grew up in the middle of nowhere. Look at that. That's beautiful. But I mean, I feel like this is all about me, but I tried to find Stuart's pictures to <laughs> add in, and he had none. I was like, Stuart, this is. So, yeah. It's just a montage going. Back the he was another version again, and we're back in the beginning. And there's no dust there. <laughs> but I got an ice protected just in case. <laughs> so if you have any pictures you'd like uh, from Burning Man that you, when you've been out there, feel free to email them in to us at info at loadedtv.com. And we'll put up your photos on a Friday. We'd love to obviously have Skype interviews if you'd like to Skype in with us. More than welcome to. That's a good idea. And if you can't understand his English accent, he <laughs> said info for me. at loadedtv.com. I N F. Oh. <laughs> so feel free to send in any Burning Man pictures, videos. If you would yep. love to do a Skype interview, if you have any kind of talent, any kind of Burning Man are. experience you would love to share, why not? Exactly. That's what we're here for. This is going to be Burning Man Fridays here on LoaderTV.com uh, from Studio M at the Morris Burner Hotel. So honestly, we'd love to obviously have you come in live if you want to. Come down here, check out the hotel, uh, meet Jungle Jim or Vision or us. And uh, even Justin would love to say hi to you. Justin's behind the scenes. You want to come <laughs> say goodbye with us? Before we come, come on in. Come on. Oh. Thank you guys so much. We'll oh. see you. When, when's the next time they're going to tune in? Uh, Mondays. All right. Monday morning. But if you want to watch the burning show, it's going to be all day. Oh, sorry, you mean this evening. Anytime. We will be five <laughs> o'clock this evening. We will actually have a Burner Network show. And we've got some burners from New York who are going to be uh, talking uh, about the regionals out mm -hmm. there. And uh, that will be hosted by Kai Plascon this evening at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So log on and feel free to chat then. Thank you guys so much. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful weekend, whatever you may be doing and wherever you are. Enjoy. And be safe. <laughs>